lasting coincidence, certainly, but couldn't be. No, these were not imagined patterns, the mind seeking to connect accidental dots with blurred lines. This was something real. Something elegant in its simplicity, yet dangerous in its enigmatic complexity. Undeniable in all its obscure perfection. Would everyone else be so blind? Others who observed this covert conspicuousness, able to untangle this perplexity, understood this cipher that surrounds this key, this 23. said all right good morning everyone welcome to defcon 20 fucking three really that's it huh all right so in the interest of time i'm going to kick it over to Ma real quick but i just want to let everyone know um they cut the presentations to 45 minutes this year not an hour when he is done i am going to escort him out if you guys have questions you can do it out in the hallway unfortunately there's no q a rooms uh so with that uh have a great presentation Okay, hi everybody. I hope you enjoy DAFCON. Uh, okay, a question. Do you play computer games? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, and uh, those of you who play computer games, have you ever thought about getting hacked via the games you play? Well, I'm Toma and I'm going to talk exactly about that. But first, a disclaimer. One of my demos will involve this security camera here and uh, if you don't want your face to show up on the screen then maybe you should sit back further or just hide your face when the time comes. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. With that said, uh, a few things about myself. Um, my name is Tomasz Sokai. I'm from Hungary uh, and I work for a um, IT security company called PR Audit as a pen tester and developer. I have an OSCE and uh, I was part of the team uh, Proditors that won the European Championship of uh, uh, Global Cyber Olympics in 2012. And I'm not sure what's happening with these slides. They are <laughs> uh, changing automatically. Uh, okay, so what am I? Uh, my favorite quote from my favorite movie uh, summarizes this quite well. I am not a computer nerd, I prefer to be called a hacker. Yeah, and uh, I do love tinkering in binary f executables, I love crackmes, and I love tinkering with uh, copy protection schemes. Okay, one more thing, and I don't want to start flame war here. I <laughs> don't know what's happening. Uh, but I just to, but I, I just have to tell you this. I very, very much prefer cute demons over uh, flightless birds and half-eaten fruits and uh, pieces of glassy wooden frames. With that said, I have to make a confession. I very, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Slides are changing <laughs> automatically. <laughs> Something I fucked up with PowerPoint, I think. Okay, so the confession, uh, I uh, was for years and I am in love with the Winter 2 API. It can be so disgustingly beautiful that you, you just gotta love it, okay? And this will be relevant later on. Uh, okay, so now they are not changing, wow. Okay, uh, games and uh, game modding. Since I'm talking to a room full of hackers, I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you about that urge to make things better, to uh, implement your own ideas. And frankly, game modding is uh, the same principle. You've got that framework, the game, 
and you you just have to create something of it. Okay, and uh, you also have to share it with others. And this is why modding will um, always play the big part in gaming. There are huge sites where you can upload your creations and uh, others can download and play them. So, games and security. One important aspect of this is uh, multiplayer gaming. Nobody likes to play alone, so uh, nearly all games have some kind of uh, multiplayer functionality. What this means from a security standpoint? Uh, it means that uh, there is a constant data exchange between the clients and the server, and uh, this data can be ki can be quite complex, like whole maps or levels. And uh, also, uh, they often use obscure protocols. Uh, and you should realize that this is a fuzzing heaven. And yeah, in 2013, Rewind showed us that it is indeed worth. Uh, fuzzing games. They had a talk about uh, zero days in game engines. But I'm not going to talk about those kind of games. I'm going to talk about scripting in games. There are lots and lots of games that incorporate some kind of uh, scripting language, either something they created or they just embed some existing uh, languages like Lua. Mm, why do they do this? Uh, they do this because uh, this makes creating dynamic content a lot, lot easier. And the important part of this is that uh, these scripting engines are available to modders. Okay, but uh, could this be really dangerous? Stop right here for a moment and, and think about it. You, as a game modder, create a, a mod or a map. Uh, and incorporate some scripts in it. Uh, the player downloads the map or he joins a, a server and the map gets downloaded automatically to his machine and eventually that script you put in there will be run on his machine. Okay? So most of the game developers realize that this could be a threat. So they try to do something against it. They try to restrict functionality. They try to implement sandboxes. Uh, but they uh, often do this uh, wrongly. They, they fail. Okay. Uh, if these kind of bugs are there, then surely I'm not the first one to, to realize this. And yeah, I'm not. There are lots and lots of uh, references on the internet uh, involving um, exploiting scripting in games. Uh, in fact, in 2013, there were several Gary's mod exploits that got uh, huge gaming media coverage. Okay, so if these things are this common, then why am I talking about this? Why am I talking about this at DEF CON? Because uh, these scripting abuses are used to cheat in games. But they can be used to access your computer. And through your computer they can be used to access your entire home network. Like your security cameras, your smart house components uh, and stuff like that. And yeah, nobody seems to talk about this kind of stuff. It's again, do this again. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm going to show you several demos uh, where I abuse scripting engines in games. My first target is uh, CryEngine 3 and the uh, whole uh, Anti Crisis 2 game. Uh, remember when I said that uh, most of the game developers realize that scripting can be a threat? Well, uh, Crytek isn't one of them. Crytek uh, seems to believe. Uh, what certain cyborgs tell about the futility of resistance uh, since they didn't bother to implement any kind of sandboxes. They use Lua and you can even call uh, operating system comments with the OS.execute call. And I'm going to show you this uh, using a crisis 2 mod I've created. Uh, a moment. Okay. It's loading. And uh, I'm sure that at least some of you have 
dreamt about hacking something via the push of a big red button. Well, we are going to do that now. I'm just put down the <laughs> So, we are here in this deserted island and uh, we've got a big red button. Wonder what it does. I'm just gonna push it and yeah, a calculator-ish thing. <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay, how did I do that? Uh, in CryEngine 3, uh, every object that can be used, uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, so uh, every object has a Lua script attached to it, and uh, here you can see the big red buttons uh, Lua script, and this is the unused event handler. And you can see that it's just an OS.execute backslash backslash evil hacksaw blah 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 thing. So it's just one call. Okay. Oh, I can't really see. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So that's how you can execute code via a, a crisis 2 map on a player's machine. Well, but one thing, what was that uh, backslash backslash evil hacksaw thingy? Yeah, that was one of the reasons I do love the Win32 API. In Win32 every functions that uh, use file paths, uh, use files can accept UNC paths. Uh, and yeah, load library and shell execute do too. So if your victim can access a Windows shell you control, then uh, you have the chance to uh, load DLS or load executable files from that remote share and you don't have to write share code, uh, you just have to use that uh, share. And this has one nice side effect, you can steal uh, NTLM challenge responses if you can uh, load a file, if you can get the victim to load a file. And I am going to show you this with uh, CryEngine 3 SDK, which is a much newer version of uh, CryEngine 3 than the one used in Crisis 2, and uh, I have this uh, Impact Samba server set up here, and this is the same button with uh, different code. It just uh, tries to access a file uh, from the chair. Okay, jump into the game. Go there and uh, push the button. Uh, okay, I. Okay, <laughs> now I push the button, and you can see on the Samba server that there is indeed my uh, NTLM challenge response. So it's a it's a nice trick, I think. Okay. Moving on. Ah, that was the demo. Uh, but before moving on, uh, we are at slide number 23, and I am personally not a believer in the 23 Enigma, but maybe the demo gods are, and I'm sure as hell don't want to anger them. So this slide is blank, almost blank. Okay. So my next game. My next game is Dota 2. It also uses uh, Lua as a scripting engine, uh, but it has a sandbox. But that sandbox is leaky, and it in fact has a huge leak. Uh, you can use the entire standard Lua I.O. library. So you can read files and you can write files. What this means, you can steal information, you can deploy auto run stuff, or you can just use the uh, anti stealing trick I've just showed you. Or uh, you can overwrite executables, and I'm going to show you this in a video because, uh, sorry. Because the game itself started not working, stopped working a few days ago. So, uh, okay, what's that? Uh, that's the video. Sorry, I can't really see that. <laughs> okay, in this uh, video, I'm going to show you a Dota 2 uh, mod 
where I attached a Lua script to the on NPC spawn event handler. So when an NPC gets spawned, uh, my Lua code will run, and this Lua code will uh, decode a base, uh, a base 64 encoded P executable and overwrite the Dota 2 main executable with it. Okay, so when the next time the gamer starts the game, it won't be the game that starts, but it will be our executable. Okay? So uh, it's just loading the map. It takes a few seconds. Okay, and, uh, your hero. okay I'm just going to create a GoBoard, an NPC with console commands. And uh, you will see that the great game freezes a bit. It uh, encodes the base 64 encoded P executable. And uh, shortly you will see that, yeah, uh, it got overwritten. You can see the size difference there. And when we try to start the game, it will be the industry standard exploit testing tool called Calculator by the Initiative. That's excluded. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, there's something wrong with PowerPoint. Okay, I'm just do this this way. Okay, uh, my next demo, it's a surprise, surprise, it's also a Lua scriptable game. Uh, it's called Digital Combat Simulator. It's a uh, flight simulator. Uh, and in fact, this was the first game I found some script to be using. Uh, I reported it to Eagle Dynamics. They fixed it, and then I found another one uh, that I am going to show you. Or rather, I'm going to ask you if you can find the fault. Uh, on the screen, you can see the entire uh, sandbox implementation of DCS Word. The question is simple where is the leak? But what did Ego Dynamic fuck up? And uh, you can win this fine bottle of Hungarian palinka if you know the answer. Okay? Nobody? See? Nobody speaks Lua? Okay, uh, then I'm just going to show you. Uh, it's on the 24 line. It's this line. They try to disable loading DLL files, but it shouldn't be loadlib. It should be package.loadlib. So, loadlib is, is nothing in, in itself. So, that was the fault. Okay, since uh, none of you could tell me the answer, I've prepared some backup questions. First one being the title of this talk is a quote. Who asked that question? Whoa. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm sure this is a right answer, but uh, I, I, I was thinking about uh, Joshua from War Games. Sorry? He was asked the question by Oh, <laughs> that's embarrassing. You're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so. I don't know whoever uh, answered first, but yeah, you should find me after the talk, okay? And uh, have your palinka. <laughs> okay, I just skip my uh, second backup question, which was uh, what is my favorite movie? <laughs> Jurassic Park, there was a quote from it. A quote from Lexi. Okay, uh, so. With this demo, uh, I am going to crush something. As you know, lots and lots of exploits start out of uh, start out as crashes. Well, this one will be a different crash. I've just created a mission in this uh, flight simulator where I've attached a Lua script to the on plane crash event. This Lua script uh, does one thing: it loads a DLL from a remote shell. So, okay. Uh, 
start the game real. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's loading. Yeah, I couldn't load all my games uh, because I have only 8 gigs of RAM. It's loading, so. <laughs> Yeah, I. Okay. So I am going to jump into the cockpit of a TF. Sorry. <laughs> there, sh there should be a paint uh, <laughs> popping up, but yeah, it's under the. Oh, sorry. Uh, under everything. That was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to <laughs> take any more time, but yeah, that popped up, if you believe me. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So, my next demo, it's a bit different. Uh, it's, a, it's different with, uh, by two reasons. This one won't abuse uh, a scripting, but it will abuse a uh, dangerous and not, well, not really well thought out uh, feature in a game. And also, this time, the gamer will be the bad guy. So we will attack the server. The game is uh, Armed Assault. This is a military combat simulator game where you can have your own squadrons and uh, you can uh, set up your squadron information, your squadron's name, a logo, a website, and so on. And every time you join the server, this information will get displayed uh, not just for you but for everyone on that server. And how do this work? On your profile, you can set up a squadron URL that points to an XML file, and every time you join the server, the server will fetch that XML file and, uh, and parse your squadron information from there. When I first read about this, I was like, this has got to be an XXC. It, it, it's, I'm sure of it. And yeah, it wasn't. But it, uh, not to worry, it's still an SSRF. And I am going to show you this. Uh, this demo is based on real life experiences. There was this guy with an armed assault server, and he also had a PHP charts server on the same machine, a PHP charts server that was only accessible from local hosts. So this is the armed assault server. Here is running a PHP charts server, and uh, PHP charts is vulnerable to an RCE that can be triggered via a GET request. So what I'm going to do is edit my uh, oh geez my profile and set up a URL localhost that triggers the PHP charts exploit. So when I join the server, uh, okay, I can't really see it, sorry. Uh, which one is multiplayer? This one? Okay, <laughs> thanks, sorry. Okay, so Just put it a bit away because I will have a NatCat listener here since the PHP charts exploit will trigger a connect back shell as soon as I join the server. Yeah, it's working, it's trying to join the server. It's a bit slow since there are several games running on the same machine and yeah, we've got a connection. And this is a shell, you can see ID, you name. So yeah, we have just executed code on a server by just joining to it, okay? Thanks. Yeah, and I've been kicked out of the server. <laughs> okay, 
So this was a get request. A get request that uh, we didn't see the answer to. But there are games when uh, you can issue get request that you can see the answer to too. And uh, one of these games is Gary's Mod. Uh, you may remember that I, I talked about Gary's Mod. It had its shares of uh, Lua related exploits in the past, and this resulted in a uh, pretty solid uh, Lua sandbox. So Gary did fix a lot of things. But it has also a huge API. There are lots and lots of functions, and uh, yeah, there are some dangerous functions too. Like this one, the, there, there is an HTTP function and it uses this uh, structure. As you can see, this is a uh, screenshot from the documentation. As you can see, you can control every aspect of an HTTP request. You can control the method, the headers, and so on. What this means, so if you create a map or a mode or a server in Gary's mode, then you can have a full fledged HTTP proxy to the gamer's home network. Okay? And yeah, I'm going to show you that with a Gary's mod mod I've created, uh, I have implemented free cancel commands uh, that only super administrators can use. One of them is ACK scan players. So it will, uh, I as a super administrator will issue this command and it will scan all connected players home network for HTTP servers. And hopefully it will find this camera here. Uh, and yeah, it did. We can see that it's a unauthorized uh, access uh, on that IP address. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna switch to uh, duplicate. Sorry about that, but I can't see anything. Okay, so now my second cancel command is used to brute force a HTTP basic authentication server. So we just uh, gonna put the user ID and the HTTP server's address here as parameters. And we can see that it tries uh, a few uh, username password combos and it finds that the username and password are admin admin. Okay, so we have the username and the password for this camera here. Now we can steal images through the game. And this is uh, what my third uh, console command is used for. It also requires the user ID to know uh, who to send it. It requires a, oh, a URL. Uh, this URL can be grasped from the HTTP server. Mm -hmm. Response and it could also be brute force, but I didn't have the time for it. So when I issue the command, it should, okay, <laughs> it's working, okay, it received an image, and yeah, here you are on the screen inside the game. Thanks. Okay. Okay, my final demo. You should be afraid of mice. And I'm not talking about those two guys there, although they can be dangerous too, but I'm talking about uh, this one. I don't know if you can see it. This is a Logitech uh, G whatever mouse, and like all Logitech uh, G series peripheral, it can be scripted with Lua uh, via the Logitech gaming software. And this Lua code runs in a very, very, very tight sandbox. But it still can be uh, circumvented by a method first shown by a, name, by a guy named Corsix in his uh, Company of Heroes 2 exploit back in 
2013, he abused handcrafted Lua byte code to achieve two tricks. The first trick is to get any uh, get the memory address of uh, any Lua variables as double. And the second one being uh, able to create uh, Lua variables that point to arbitrary memory locations. These two tricks combined leads to arbitrary memory read write, which eventually leads to code execution. Okay, how did he do these tricks? The first trick uh, in Lua, every variable is a uh, T value. T value is a struct that stores the actual value in its first eight bytes. Okay? Uh, in case of a Lua number, that first eight bytes is uh, double, and in case of any other Lua variables, it's a pointer to a structure. So, for example, for a Lua string, it's a T string pointer. So, if we could get Lua to interpret, for example, a string as a number, then we can get that uh, pointer, that memory address, as a double. Okay? And yeah, of course, it did uh, exactly that. He used the for loop and he noped out the op for prep uh, op code. Op for prep is responsible for uh, checking if every parameter for the for loop is actually a number. So he noped that out and the second op code just assumed that they are numbers. So they get interpreted as numbers and that's how you get memory addresses as doubles. Okay? So the second trick, it's a bit trickier. And it's done uh, basically in these few lines and I'm going to go through it uh, line by line. Okay, in Lua, app values are entities that belong to functions and they represent uh, function parameters or variables that are declared outside of the scope of the Mm, of the function. So we create a string, a Lua string, that looks like an up value. So we will have a chunk of memory that can be interpreted as an up value. An up value that points to the memory uh, location we want to re read or write. This uh, end thing here. Okay, second line. Uh, we want the address of that memory chunk, so we get the address of the Lua string, but because the Lua string actually is a T string structure, uh, we will need to add tw 24 bytes to it because the first 24 bytes of the T string structure is just much data. Okay, so now we got the uh, memory chunks address in Upwell PTR. So next step, we modify the bytecode by hand in so that the variable magic will point to, uh, will be interpreted as an air closure. Air closures are mm, representing Lua functions in, in Lua. So we set up magic's value by concatenating the upper PTR string three times. Okay, so magic is a string. Then it gets interpreted as an air closure. As you can see on the bottom part of the slide, uh, characters 16 to 24 will be the air closure's upwards field. Upwards is, uh, is an array of upper U pointers. And since those characters are indeed an up value pointer, we just set our outer functions first up value uh, to point to our memory address, the memory address we want to read or write. And because the first up value to that function is magic, we can access that memory address via magic. Okay? So how did Corsix uh, exploit this? He created a coroutine with coroutine.wrap. It 
creates a C closure uh, on the Lua stack. C closure is just a Lua representation of a native function pointer, the native function being Lua B oxtrap in this case. Okay, he then replaced this uh, function pointer with a pointer to LL loadlib, which is also a C closure uh, function, and uh, it's basically a wrapper around load library. So uh, after that, when he called the core routine as the DLL name of uh, as parameter, he could load that DLL into the address space of of the game. So what did I do differently? Uh, first of all, mine is a 64 bit exploit. His was uh, 32. What this means? It means that the memory layout and the struct packing is uh, different. Uh, the calling conventions are different, so we can't modify function parameters since they are not uh, on memory, they are not on the stack, they are passed uh, as registers. The most important uh, difference of this, uh, uh, the most important thing of this 64 uh, bit difference is that the size of a double equals the size of a pointer. This actually makes this exploit a lot easier, uh, since uh, you you don't have to worry about the uh, size difference by when using the first trick. Okay. So and I also couldn't call LL loadlib since uh, LL loadlib is just a stop when you compile Lua as an ANSI code. It does nothing. So I had to call native functions directly. I have to find uh, useful native functions that accept one parameter that is a pointer. Load library is a good candidate since it accept a string and also um, shell execute would be two. Okay, so we have to get load library's address. We have to replace Lua B wrap with load library A. And uh, we have to override the Lua state with the DLL name. This is because we can't uh, modify the parameter itself. We have to modify the data it points to. And uh, the pointer points to the actual Lua state, so we have to override that. And after that, we can call the core routine and execute load library. So there are some difficulties. How to get the address of the Lua state struct? Uh, when you're Code runs in a coroutine. Coroutine dot running gives you back the Lua state, so that's easy. Okay, there were some crashes. I had to uh, uninstall the back hooks. I had to stop the garbage collector, and I also had to re uh, restore the Lua state. And uh, one other question remains: How to get load library's address? There's a simple solution. Uh, what Corsix used, he used the uh, memory difference in the PE executable to calculate the load library address, but there's a much more generic solution. You can get and read the address of the NT header, from that you can have the import directory's address, you can search for kernel 2 DLL in it, and uh, you can have load library's address from the kernel 32's import address table. All this with these two tricks. This is much, much more generic and uh, something like that can be used on other operating systems by, for example, parsing the AF uh, header. Okay, with this approach, there is a restriction. You can only overwrite 16 bytes of the uh, Lua state, but this, not, this is not really a problem since we can omit the dot DLL and load library will still find the DLL. So if we use U and C pass, then we have nine characters for an IP, an address, uh, or a domain name. So it's not really a problem. Well, uh, okay, I'm running out of time, I think. So I'm just gonna show you this. Uh, here is the uh, profile with the script. This is a uh, this is the script and it's attached to the uh, middle mouse button. So when I press the middle mouse button, a calculator appears. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Uh, 
Okay. So we are at the end of my talk. Uh, one question: Should we listen to Joshua and uh, uh, just stick to a nice game of chess? Of course we shouldn't. We should play computer games, but we should be aware of these threats, and uh, we should treat our games like we treat uh, all of our other softwares. And also, game developers should uh, pay more attention to this kind of stuff. Okay, this concludes my talk. Thank you very much for listening and have a good afternoon.